Hello and welcome to this edition of Tech Talk. This is where we bring technical experts from Cisco to share their insights on specific topics selectively chosen based on most common conversation themes on our technology area in community. Our topic for discussion will be troubleshooting high CPU due to multicast. Understanding Cisco Unified Communication Security. And I've seen this question coming up every now and then. Very good explanation. I hope it helps the audience. Hi folks and welcome to this brand new edition of Tech Talk here on the Cisco Support Community. This is where we bring technical experts from Cisco to share their insights on specific topics selectively chosen based on most common conversation themes on our technology area. It's an effort to share those valuable insights from those experts on these popular topics. We hope you like it. Our topic for discussion today is Unified Contact Center Express UCCX latest release which is version 10. This version is packed with a lot of new features and also architectural changes which are introduced. In this edition of Tech Talk, we will discuss in brief about these new features and also some of the key points that needs to be kept in mind in terms of hardware requirements, hardware platform and support. To talk more on the same, we have our expert joining me today is Abhiram Karmadati, a technical support engineer with Cisco's Contact Center Backbone Tag Team. Welcome to the Tech Talk, Abhiram. Hi, Sathya. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. So let me give a brief introduction about Abhiram. Abhiram has wide experience in UCC telephony applications, Java telephony API integration, UCCX system behavior, LDAP components, and UCCX as IP interactive voice response in unified contact center enterprise environments. He has been actively handling many technical escalations in the Asia Pacific region and also holds a CCI certification in voice. So Abhiram, I hear that there are a number of new features uh, which are introduced in 10. So you have worked that, uh, you know, extensively worked on that. So what are your thoughts about that? Oh yes, there are a lot of new features introduced in this version of UCCX. So you have a lot of new features like finesse, you have uh, CUIC, you have media sense recording. And apart from the new features, you also have a lot of architectural changes that are being introduced. So as a customer, you might not be able to see these changes, but they go a very long way in improving the product stability. And we will discuss more about this through the course of this conversation. Mm -hmm. So it looks like there will be a number of upgrades to this version. And is there any anything different one needs to look uh, look out for? Well, Satish, when you are upgrading to this version of UCCX, the 10.0, uh, the normal scenarios and the normal precautions of any upgrade holds good. But there are there is one specific uh, scenario which you need to take a, take care for, which is in UCCX 10, we support only Linux to Linux upgrades. So what this essentially means is that if you are a customer who is running a Windows version of UCCX, like 7.x, 6.x or anything below 8.x, you cannot move directly into 10.x. Now mind you, this was possible in the earlier versions. Like if you take an example of 9.x, you could move from 7.0 to 9.0 directly. But then in case you are planning to move to 10.0, you have to first move into an intermediate Linux version and only then will you move into 10.0. Now in the slide, if you can see, I've given a couple of examples, but these are not binding. You can choose your own path, but you will ultimately have to plan for an intermediate release, right? Now, there's, while we're on the same topic, there is one important point that we all need to note. And once you move into the Linux version, just make sure that you're on the latest service release that is the latest SR on that Linux version before you move to 10. Now let me take an example of 8.5. In 8.5, you have to move into 8.5.1 SR4 before you can move into 10 because SR4 is currently the latest. Now the most common question I have come across in this, you know, in this domain is what happens uh, if a new service release is released in a couple of months down the lane, right? So for example, again 8.5, if SR5 comes out in two months time, so support will be such that you can upgrade to 10.0 both from SR4 and SR5. So you can, uh, you know, upgrade to 10.0 from any of the latest SRs of that particular Linux version. Okay. So while we are talking about uh, installation and upgrade, are there any changes in terms of hardware requirement? Uh, I'm glad you brought up this uh, question, Satish, because this, according to me, is one of the biggest and the major changes in terms of uh, UCCX 10.0 in terms of support, as well as installation and, and all the, you know, uh, components you would see in setting up, right? So in unlike the previous version of UCCX, 
this version of UCCX supports installation only on a virtual environment. Like if you take 9.x, you could have installed 9.x both on an MCS, that is a bare metal server, or on a UCS which is virtual machine. But 10.x you can install only on a virtual machine. So this is the biggest change in terms of support for hardware on this version. Now if you are a customer, you will, you will have a question saying that say I am on 9.0, and I am all I'm on MCS and I want to move into 10.x so what do I do the so what are the options you have so in this scenario you basically have to first migrate the system on the existing version into UCS and then upgrade that into 10.0 on the UCS version right so taking this into account I have basically just charted out two different options you can take and I have put that into the slide. So if you look if you notice the two options so the first couple of uh, steps are common so first you take the backup of the existing server itself, you take a DRF backup. Once you take the DRF backup, install the same server on a virtual machine, make sure it's the same IP address, same host name and all the same details and then perform a DRF restore of the publisher. Now at this stage you basically have two options. Now option one, let's look at path one, what are the advantages and the disadvantages. So you basically reinstall the subscriber right, with the same version, same credentials, same IP address and host name add it to the cluster and then you perform a DRF restore. Now you, you have fully functional 9.x cluster on the UCS platform which you can now upgrade to 10.x. Now the second path is once you have restored the publisher with the DRF restore, you can go ahead and delete the subscriber from the configuration, right? And then once you do that, you can upgrade only the publisher to 10.x and then install the subscriber directly on 10.x and then add it to the cluster. Now in both the paths, at the end of the path you have a 10.x cluster. But the advantage of path 1 is that in case you are using recording feature of UCCX, you will retain all the recording files. Because if you notice how the recording feature works, it is uh, the recording files are stored in a round robin basis. So first call is stored on node 1, second call on node 2 and so on. So if you go ahead with the first first path, you will completely retain all the information, but the disadvantage is you will take considerably larger amount of time than path 2 because you have to restore the second subscriber, you know, upgrade node 1, upgrade node 2, switch version on node 1 and switch version on node 2. But if you look at path 2, you just have to do one upgrade on node 1, switch version and then add the subscriber directly on 10.x, right? So you save considerable amount of time. But the biggest, uh, you know, the drawback is if you had, you know, recording data on node 2, that will be lost because you will not be restoring from the DRF backup. Now, based on these considerations, you can, you can take a call and on which path you have to go, right? And while we are on the same topic, uh, there is this one troubleshooting tip which I have seen you know, based on, uh, based on the cases I have handled and if you, if you can just look out for these two defects, I think you will have a much smoother transition. So first defect is obviously where, this is a pretty well known defect, we have a field notice also, where the backup is, is shown as successful, but if you look at the logs, you will you'll realize that the LDAP component is never backed up. So when you restore the system, you realize that the LDAP component is missing. So this means the agents cannot log in, so you have an outage after the restore. So just w what you can do is a very simple step. Once you take the backup, open the UCCX component log and just look for the file, look for the line rather which says done executing backup LDAP script. So that basically means that your LDAP is backed up and you have a good backup in the system, right? And now the other defect is uh, when you do a restore, right? And then once you do a restore, you still realize that your LDAP is missing, but you have ensured that the backup is good but you still don't understand why the LDAP is not restored, right? So at that point of time, you can turn your attention to this defect and how you, how you can mitigate the effects of this defect is do a reboot of the server, wait for all the services to come up, ensure that the cluster view daemon or the CVD service is up completely up and running in the started state and then perform another restore. At this point of time, you guys should be good and have a good good restored system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these details will be there in the blog. Yeah, absolutely. I'll I'll document all this in the blog. Yes.